So the fact that Indian content can translate around the world has been clearly proved by that. If somebody had told me you could actually work out to Indian classical music, I wouldn't have believed you. I probably still don't believe you, but, but still, we will park that just for the, just for, just for the moment. Like that, I'll tell you where the technology part, he said something very important, you know, platformed in 190 countries. Now that's where technology plays a slight difference because till 10 years ago, 15 years ago, if you were saying, I want to take this globally, which means I have to take it to cinema theaters. You could approach it from a certain manner. And all right, Amir Khan movies could translate into in China and people would watch them or something else would happen. But your ability to use platforms like you know Amazon Prime and others, that changes the way you're visualizing content, presumably, because you're not having to launch it into cinema theaters everywhere. Absolutely. Um, I think for the very first time, we're actually conversing with the world. And um, until now, listen, for us as creators, um, we'll create content any day. But for the longest time, we were creating content only for like a homegrown audience per se. And like you said, an NRI audience, right? A spillover NRI audience. But for the first time, I think we're actually talking to the world. You know, uh, that's, that's actually the finest part about having people like Amazon here. They facilitate that for us. They set us up for that. When you're talking to the rest of the world and not just to a homegrown Indian audience, you have to be able to make content that's going to be interesting for them. Um, you can't just say that, oh, I make this for India. Of course, it has to do really well in India as well, because that's your primary audience. That's the audience that you're reaching out to first. Uh, but the rest of the world is a fabulous ocean that you now have uh, direct access to. So if as a creator you're not using that, it's kind of like a wasted opportunity. Um, so absolutely, we're all uh, talking to the globe in that sense. Um, Gaurav, when you're looking at this from the point of view of, okay, we are tra trying to translate India as a place where you were importing a lot of content historically, you're wanting to now export it also. All of these changes and the technological changes, how does it affect things like segmentation, for example? Because till now, segmentation had to be done, okay, I'm going to do this for North India or South India or that. Now, are you looking at content and saying, okay, this can be segmented to this particular demographic in India, but it will also translate into this demographic in Africa and maybe a sub-demographic in Latin America and this content could... So it's a, it's a different sort of a way of approaching segmentation altogether. Yeah. I think, uh, great question. I think I, I divide that into three different kinds of segmentation points. First, uh, ability to tell stories that we just could not tell in the past, given the economics of that business. So I'll give you an example. If you go back to the 90s and you had only single screen theaters, why would all the movies be typically the masala movies with, with actually comedy, action, drama, song, dance, everything built into it because you had to fill 1,000 seats in the theater. So you had to cater to a taste segmentation, which was a little more broader center of play all across the board. The moment multiplexes came, you could actually program for 100 screens, uh, 100 people in a screen. And you actually could have the Dil Chata Hai and Gully Boy and all of that. So I think streaming is allowing you to do, first of all, that, to create or content for segments. Now the question is, how large is the segment? And that question comes in from point of what you can do in the domestic market and the international market. One of the permanent changes of what happened with the, with the pandemic and over the years of programming uh, uh, you know, across 10 languages here is we're seeing the linguistic palette of the Indian audience itself become much broader. So today people are watching content in more than one language. So 50% so of our audience actually watches content in more than four languages. So which basically means my addressable market for anything, even the segment has gotten broader. It's not 4x because they're actually watching content across languages. A Malala movie being watched across the country, right? So the third part of that piece comes in of the international and the diaspora and non-diaspora, which then automatically allows, so as an example, 20% of our audience for any of our originals is, is outside India, um, but you make locally make here. Um, 240 countries is where we actually are, on territories are where we are available in, and most of our movies and shows are watched between 160 to 200 countries in the weeks of launch. And now what happens is, I have a core addressable audience which I have a segmentation on, and then I have an audience by virtue of technology who may have like this, and their personalization then throws more like that. And they start getting used to it. And the moment you start getting used to the idea of the film music you talked about, or a particular 
content from a particular country we talk about korean shows we talk about you know shows from latin, latin america same thing happening in india you say hey great quality content coming here is part of my recommendation each time so i get more and more so the audience pool itself keeps expanding and then of course you serve more of that so first of all like to summarize we couldn't make segmented stories earlier we are able to make it now second is like the domestic market pool itself has expanded so much allowing a larger target market and then of course the international plays on in, in this play of expanding it for the entire entire um, you know uh, market and i would say one more thing here it's really not just about us story that prime video would would put up put out or netflix or hotstar the reality is one great indian show from any of us works for everyone right so i think it's similarly local market because it's too early in the days and there's so much more the, the headroom for growth so actually it's more the market making and category creation time uh, for indian content that every great film every great show from anywhere expands the pool for indian content so yeah no that's a, that's an interesting point and he's right that the if you ask people about their viewership patterns here in india multiple indian languages look at the look at the sort of success that movies from the south are getting now uh, radically more so than earlier the fact that as he said korean shows israeli shows shows from multiple different places in different languages you're watching them and not even thinking twice about the fact that it's in a in a different language is this to your mind something which is happening across the globe or is it more in some markets where you open to international content absolutely and i think what it brings to mind is it makes our languages okay right there's means to translate maybe the algorithm on the subtitles may not get it right <laughs> but it does open up for say nollywood in nigeria to figure out how to use all the diversity of languages there or kenya or south africa or elsewhere what that does even for the diplomatic maybe down the line you know diplomatic engagements we don't always have to use english and french right it could get there because you read you you know that you translate you start to pick up some words you bring it into your local dialect and so on and so forth so there's something about indian content even before the digital era because i remember vhs tapes making the circuit back home that shows that there is a possibility to stand for something about these languages that need to be brought in as viable as any other western language that we've been told is a way of doing business but now we should we've been shown through entertainment that it's a way of life and it's okay for us to also express ourselves that way so in that regard i think there's a great potential to yeah make it okay for everybody to express themselves articulate themselves with, with what works for them and then we'll learn from one another that way would you have you stopped thinking too much about sharp segments in your own mind have you stopped thinking about things like this will work in this culture or these areas have you stopped thinking about language and this could be a language barrier is that gone out of your head or not yet i think by and large it has i think uh, you know there is uh, the ability as gora very rightly said that now one can segment one can uh, think of telling uh, more true grown stories uh, but you know i think more than even just if you look at the indian audience which is something that you know we often miss even before the step of kind of you know exporting our content internationally we are a very weird country where we have such diversity that trying to cater to pan india which is the new famous term itself is quite a uh, confusing and challenging term at least for uh, for content creators i think in today's time because uh, you know you you talk a lot about the south uh, the 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 uprise of the south but we mustn't forget that their core audience is still very homogenous and is one state whereas the more the hindi film industry is catering to haryana delhi bombay pune west bengal bihar cpci madhya pradesh which in itself is very very diverse so in fact the segmentation in fact is very diverse even between those audiences the kind of films that do much better in um, uh, north india are not the ones that do well in maharashtra uh, you know like for example i'll give you an example of the one of the biggest movie makers like rohit shetty his average business of every film is 60 to 70% from one state maharashtra uh but you know and but those but he hits the ball so out of the park in this one state that those numbers are massive so but when you really start talking about segmentation there is a huge uh, segmentation even within the country before we start thinking about uh taking it out what i think has gone away is the thought process that oh this film cannot be made because 
it will not get a theatrical uh, release. I think that thought has gone away. I think the freedom and liberty that content creators today have to tell great stories or stories that might be very niche, which actually might be very segmented, is all possible now thanks to the OTT uh, revolution. So I would actually say that it is a very, very liberating time. And in fact, the pressure is really now on us as content creators to create absolutely world-class content because here the opportunity is there, the technology is there, the money backing us to do what we want if we have a great story and ideas there. So really there is absolutely no reason other than the failure of content creators for us not to be a global export over the next five years and not be creating world-class series out of India on a regular basis, not as a one-off but on a very, very regular basis. Okay, I'm going to pick on one line that you said, the money is there, Rangita, as I throw that to you. Right, because while a lot of this has been said in the past, has been there as a concept in the past also, for years I've been hearing in panels like this, but how do you monetize? How do you make the revenue? Who pays the bills? Now, it's good to have someone like Gaurav out here who says, don't worry, I'm going to be paying the bills, but you know, is, that the, is there enough money now to be able to do a lot of this, the revenue model? Well, there's more and plenty. Absolutely. I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think money is what's holding us back right now. I think we as creators need to step up, which is great ideas now. Um, you know, we're so conditioned um, to live within an Indian film industry that many of us are unable to think beyond that well, and we're just opening our minds up. Uh, we're also uh, extremely lazy in that sense, you know. Uh, there's money and we're running to pick it up, but we're not respectful of that money and understanding of how it can really change uh, the content industry as we see it and as we've known it. Uh, so money, money's there. Um, uh, Mr. Gandhi here is an extremely generous boss, um, and there are many of him around. Um, but we really, really, really need to step up and make world-class content, content that's not just ticking boxes, content that's not just making stuff for little uh, pockets of audiences, but content that can really get out there. You know, um, um, there's the squid game, there's, there's everything happening around the world. You know, I want to show around the next squid game. Gaurav, without giving away our age, I remember having conversations with you, what, 14 years ago about revenue models and you know, how pe money can be made. Is it easier with the new technology and with streaming and everything else that's happening, is it easier to monetize now, I, setting creative I, I, creation aside? I think because the audience, first of all, streaming gives so much option to the, to the customer at the end of it, of content. It is even harder for the creators to make sure that they tell stories which are compelling and will keep audiences on. So a lot of pressure on, on the creators to create the stories. But what streaming is enabling you to do is a multi multitude of models of Vikram. I think what was earlier was that we were fixated on, in the TV world of ours, which we both came from, it was largely ads, some subscriptions. In the film world, we'll pay for a ticket, we'll have this whole piece, and Amrit clearly called out about the, the intricacies of the, how the film market works as well. The interesting streaming world, we're just five, seven years of the industry, uh, you know, you have a pure SWOT model. You have an ads plus subscription model. You have a transactional model emerging. We're actually already doing rental of movies. You have a model where you can actually do a B2B subscription piece. So there's so many models emerging already. So you can actually choose, hey, I actually want to give a story to our customers absolutely without a fee and have a large number of customers on. You can be on a free service, you can be on YouTube, can be elsewhere. You have your own channel on YouTube, for that matter. Uh, or you can be on mini TV, or you can be on MX player or whatever. You have a subscription service which can go global. You can actually say, I want to be on Prime Video or others. I think that's there. You can actually now, to the point of release of movies, uh, in the pandemic, uh, when we first got a set of movies to release on theater, there was a lot of uh, you know, question about the fact that, will it ever work? And I remember the first few movies we got on, the creators were uncomfortable, they were not sure, but once they saw the, re the reach of that, the fact that 200 countries you could release a film on, people could watch it, uh, which would earlier be in 12 countries. And in India, you talked about the, the one state viewing Amrit, the reality is today, the, today most of our movies from, from the, the southern languages are watched 50% of the audience outside the home state. 
So the, the money is not just in the models, the money is actually also in the fact that there is an audience side size expansion. Um, so I think the technology is enabling both the models to emerge and the audience size to grow. And of course, it's not that it's an easy business to do. It's, uh, you know, content is expensive. But I think the fact is that content lives with you for a long time. People come back on, anybody new comes on to streaming, somebody will watch also the old, older season, they'll also watch. So ability to, to uh, monetize that also has changed quite dramatically.